What's up and welcome everybody to a new video here on the official MTG Arena YouTube channel. My name is Ejlizzle and today we are having a look at this deck from the most recent standard Pro Tour, Rectal's Aggro. Now you already know I had to check out the Rectal's deck, so let's get started and let's have a look at what cards this deck is playing. So here we're looking at Rectal's Aggro and the first card that I'm noticing is the Forsaken Miner, a 1 mana 2-2 two -two skeleton rogue creature from the new set Outlaws of Thunder Junction. And a Forsaken Miner cannot block, but whenever you commit a crime, you can play one black. And if you do, you can return the Forsaken Miner from your graveyard to the battlefield. And this card works so nicely with some of the cards in this deck, like Inti Seneschal of the Sun, that whenever you attack, you can discard a card and give a 1-1 one -one counter on target attacking creature and trample as well. And whenever you discard one or more cards, you can exile the top card of your library, play the card until the next end step. And the Forsaken Miner just makes a fantastic discard target to Inti, but it also makes a great discard target for Liliana of the Veil, which is a 3-mana Planeswalker with a plus 1 ability of each player discards a card. And Liliana has a minus 2 ability of target player sacrifice a creature. And to be honest, in this current standard environment, you can never have enough removal. So Liliana gets the job done. And it's just really good as well against like grinding it out against other like mid-range decks. But I also really like the synergy of Liliana and Inti together. Because if you discard a card to Liliana with Inti in play, you can basically like replace that card until the end of turn. It's a nice way to like not run out of cards and in a way like generate card advantage. So that's really cool. Outside of that, we're basically seeing a lot of like the current black standard staples, like three copies of Preacher of the Schism. Not the most aggressive card, but super good at grinding out games. If we're ahead in life, then we get to draw a card and lose one life. And if we're behind on life, then we create a 1-1 one -one vampire token. Now the never run out of cards, this deck is playing four copies of Gix Yawgmoth Breeder because this card is a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three creature, and whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller may pay one life. If they do, they draw a card. So it's just a fantastic way to, as long as you're playing creatures, you will always make sure that you have some cards, especially when it's combined with so much removal like this deck is doing. So you can kind of like clear the way for yourself and just make sure that your creatures are like swinging in. Gix gets you some more cards and get some more removal and keep the way clear. Kind of is like what the deck wants to do. Speaking of removal, we got a new one right here from Thunder Junction. Shoot the Sheriff. Two mana instant, destroy target non-outlaw creatures. And outlaws are assassins, mercenaries, pirates, rogues, and warlocks. So what I like that the players have done here is that they have like a 2-2 two -two split between go for the throw and shoot the Sheriff. Because go for the throw cannot destroy artifact creatures and shoot the Sheriff cannot destroy outlaws. So they're kind of like taking a gamble here. Like if my opponent is playing artifacts, then I can just use shoot the sheriff to get rid of something. And if they're playing outlaws, then I can just use go for the throat. So I really like that. And we have the three copies of cut down in here as well. So a lot of crimes that are being committed in this deck, which is really sweet for the Forsaken Miners. And of course, we have Shouldered in the deck as well. Four mana, four five creature. We all know Shelly. Death Touch, whenever you draw a card, you gain to life. And whenever your opponent draws a card, they lose to life. And in an environment where a lot of people are playing cards like Rafine or find other ways to draw cards, Shouldered will uh, deal a lot of damage to your opponent very quickly if she doesn't get removed. So absolutely like a must include in most black decks in the current standard meta. And I'm also seeing the Thief Cavern Bat, another staple in black and standard. Two mana, one one, flying lifelink. And when the bat ends the battlefield, you get to look at the target opponent's hand. And you may exile a null land card from it until the bat leaves the battlefield. This card is so crucial in the standard meta because you can just grab removal out of your opponent's hand. You can grab a combo piece out of your opponent's hand. You can grab a board wipe. Um, you can also basically look at the opponent's hand and figure out like what their strategy is and how you should sequence your own hand based on their hand. You know the drill. The bat kind of just like demands removal too, else your opponent will always be down a card. Yeah, the bat is an absolute menace in standard and all the black decks are playing four copies of this thing. And with a reason, like this card is super strong. So that's what we're doing in this deck as well. And outside of that, we're just playing good Rakdos cards. And I'm getting really excited to play with this. Okay, so now that we know how the deck works, it's time to get into some sweet best of three action. My absolute favorite format. And please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more best of three content, because I will happily do that for you. And we'll also make sure to include sideboarding as well. So we can kind of figure out how to do that together and maybe learn a thing or two as well if you kind of like struggle with you know, figuring out how to sideboard. Anyways, I am super stoked to play this deck. I know we're going to destroy the ladder, so let's get into it. But before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe to the official NTG Arena YouTube channel. And if you want to see more of my own content, you can do that over on youtube.com slash ashlizzle, where I post daily NTG Arena brews. All right, huge shout out to Wizards of the Coast for allowing me to make another video for you guys. 
and let's get started. All right, let's see what kind of hand we can get here. Ooh, <laughs> Liliana and go for the throat's good though. I wish we had a little bit more of like a curve going on for us here, but this is technically keepable, I think. The Gixes will save us with the card draw, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Ooh. Okay, at least we got an Inti here. Restless Vents. We could get hit by like a Deep Cavern Bat or something. Hopefully not, but... Okay, whoa. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Phyrexian Sacrifice? Is that what this is? That would be something that I have not seen in a very, very long time. That is pretty cool. Okay, I'm just gonna like... pass the turn here and see what else they're doing. Okay, yeah, this person is cooking. <laughs> oh, this is this is really sweet. Okay. Yeah, let's take uh, control back of this board here with the go for the throw on the attacker, and then Liliana will take out the other one. Please come back to you for four mana. Sacrifice artifact to creature, turn it from the graveyard to the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. All right, all right, you got it. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to take care of this real quick. Come on, Liliana. <laughs> Put it into work. And then next turn, we have potentially Forsaken Miner and Gix, if we feel like it. Start drawing some cards. I mean, the opponent did just miss out on the land drop, so that could help. Grafted Butcher. Like, I always try to make Rectal's like, Phyrexians work, but never with success. So I'm, I'm hyped. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm really hyped to see what they're, uh, what they're coming up with. All right, yeah, I think we're gonna like stick to our original plan here. Um, we're gonna do Gix and Forsaken Miner, I think. You also have something with Inti and Liliana, but we'll do that next turn. Um, I think I value Merrick's over Soken so I'm gonna have plus here first. Technically, it's right to like not give them like any information or whatever over like what our next couple of cards are going to be. Shoulder it. Okay, that makes sense. That's uh, pretty far off from casting for the opponent, I'm afraid. All right, there we go. It's looking, it's looking really good. It's looking really good. I'm rooting for the opponent like a little bit too, though, because <laughs> that is, I respect them so much for this. It's going to be tricky to get out of this, though, I'm sure. I mean, we're going to be drawing like so many cards, like the card advantage for us is about to go crazy. We still have Liliana capable of minusing. We just found another Liliana. Um, I'm going to start off by attacking first here and seeing what's up. I don't, yeah, I don't think Gix survives. Okay, there we go. So it's just a Forsaken Miner. Um, I could do Inti here. Not really feeling it. Well, Inti could technically allow me to replay a card. So let's think about this. So maybe it is Inti. Maybe it is Inti here, discard Liliana, and maybe Inti hits a land. That would be pretty nice, I think. And if not, I can just put Gix in play next turn and we, um, you know, we just draw cards then, I guess. Arcfiend? Okay, so we draw a cut down. That's not really where I want to be at, but it's okay. Arcfiend, shoulder it. Two grafted butchers. So maybe they're just like Phyrexian dot deck, not necessarily sacrifice. That makes a little bit more sense. Okay. Now, is the scam going to get a little crown? Probably. <laughs> Probably. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So... That gets somewhat tricky because when that dies, it will deal damage equal to its power to any target. So if I minus now, it's going to take out Inti. But if I go to combat, then it's going to take out two things. So that's also not good. Um, so we're kind of forced to like minus here. Just accept that we're losing NT, but we're going to get some more cards back with Gix at least, so that should be good. They could also go after Liliana. I think that's valid too, but it's got to be NT. Yeah, there you go. So they get to draw a card. We lose our NT. We're going to put Gix in play and get some cards back. That's... Please, please. Uh, okay, sure. If we just had that land the turn earlier, that would have been... I mean... It would have been nice, but I don't think it would have changed like a whole lot or anything, so you know. Flash Gorger. Alright, alright. Ooh. A lot of lands here. Um I could swing in with vents and gix. 
that would draw me two cards. Um, Liliana could get taken out, though. It's kind of the problem. And the Flesh Gorger makes a good target for a crown, too. This is where Shoot the Sheriff would be very nice, because Go for the Throat couldn't hit it, so... Man, this is tricky, because even if it gets a crown, it would take out... I'm still one creature, but they also play a lot of removal. I think I just swing in here. I think I just swing. Just with these two guys. Not with the Forsaken Miner, because it's got lifelink, so that makes things, like, unnecessarily complicated. Another land. Okay. Mmm, that's rough. At some point, we gotta hit some, uh, some gas here. <laughs> At some point. Yeah, I'm... I mean, I guess I'm okay with that. You know? I gotta be. I could get to, I get to keep Liliana that way, which is nice. Ooh, Harvester. Harvester's also sweet because the blood token allows us to get rid of this other land eventually. Or whichever land we're gonna draw in the future because we're gonna Liliana first, so... And then eventually, or finally, we have like the minus two available again. So that's good. Vron. Maybe they do have sacrifice themes. It would make sense. Okay, yeah, the bloated guy is the probably the best way to benefit from sacrifice. And when it dies, incubate X for X is its power. Cool, cool. Um, I am probably just going to swing here. Like I could remove this. But let me see what's up. I think I'm going to do, like, Restless Vents. Is it swing with everything? Yeah, I want to say yeah, I, I kind of am. I will discard a Forsaken Miner, like, this is where uh, that comes in clutch. So let's see if they are down to trade with Harvester or Miner. I'd be okay with that. Okay. That's fine. So then I'm going to do Deep Cavern Bat. We're going to look at the opponent's hand. Yeah, I wish you could bring that back. Two Corrupted Convictions. Okay. So there is some sacrifice stuff going on here. And then it's going to be Lily Plus. All right, sweet. So the other Liliana Minus could get me back a Forsaken Miner too. They're going to like try to charge. Go after Lily. That's a 5-3, though. Sheesh. <laughs> Sheesh. Um, this could be a bat chump. I think it is. I think it is. I think we give them... Yep. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give them the conviction. And I'm going to mine this with Liliana, which also triggers committing crimes. Oh, there it is. Uh, shoot the sheriff. Nice. So, yeah, I'm gonna do minus here. Crime gets committed, so I get my Forsaken Miner back. They might just do, like, Corrupt Conviction in response, which, you know, I guess it is it is what it is. Okay. Good cards for them, though. And then, uh, yeah, I'll swing in with the, the Restless Vents, too. There I go. I'm going to hold that card. That's good. Okay. They're drawing like a good amount of cards. It's like the Turn Smogren's Crown as well. And I'm just trying to like stay true to the deck's name, Rectus Aggro. Let's <laughs> try to go face. Uh, Incubate 2. Okay. Draft the Butcher. Hmm. The lifelink on that, not a big fan of it. I'm gonna have to like give up Liliana at some point, really. It's it's not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. So if I play this land out, I can do restless vents plus uh oh. I can just discard the land to the restless vents as well, to be honest. I like that better. 
Um, just gotta figure out how do I go about this stuff. Because I could plus with Liliana, I might plus with Liliana. Okay. I'm going in with the swing first here. Draw a card to discard a card, so I'll get rid of the swamp here. Inti, nice, okay. And then it's gonna be shoot the sheriff on the drinker, I think, because of the the lifelink. I'm not really looking forward to messing around with that. <laughs> so is that another corrupted conviction? It could be. Yeah, okay. Corrupt the conviction number three. Just uh, getting grindy. Yeah, I'm keeping the inti. It's too valuable to me. So Liliana's plus. Each player discards a card is unfortunately not committing a crime, but her minus is, so... Okay, what is going on over here? Okay, just goes face. Fine by me. This almost makes me think like, would I want a plus here? Because it kind of, in a way, forces the opponent to go after Liliana or lose a creature. And with them being at three life, I think I benefit from plusing. Either it gets rid of, it gets rid of like, uh, you know, a blocker one way or another. And I think that's just really valuable right now. I think it's worth trying. I think I need to discard this, even though, like, Inti is so good. I think I have to discard. Okay. So, how are they planning on getting out of this? You can incubate, but it's kind of, like, intense on mana. Not that they have a problem with that, I guess. <laughs> Alrighty, and then it could still bring back one of these. Could sacrifice crown, bring back grafted butcher? No, they're just equipping this. Okay. So they kind of need to have like a one drop or two drop here. As a creature, <laughs> not a crown. Okay, so this should win the game. If incubating, like they can either incubate or remove. So, but I, there's no way they can do both. And that's how we win the game here. We even have the minor discard. The Forsaken Miner is putting in the work though. Like <laughs> really good in a deck like this. All right, we, we grinded them out. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, now, when it comes to sideboarding. Let's have a look. What are we going to do here? So they definitely are working a lot with the graveyard. Like there were the grafted butchers in here. They had some of the, the incubate stuff with the drinkers. I could consider doing some graveyard hate. Obliterating bolt seems tempting. Did it Sugu? Doesn't I mean exile all graveyards is pretty neat. But I don't know if there's enough value outside of that. I don't really think so. There's definitely an argument for the abraid as well, because they were in it for so long because of the Transmorgan's crown. So I could see a braid. I could see I mean bolt is good with like the exile effect, so I could see that. Um Blood out, exiles creature or planeswalker they control with the greatest mana value among creatures and planeswalkers they control seems pretty good. Um, just torn about that soul guide lantern. I could also see value in potentially Gix command, but I think they have too many creatures of like with a different power and toughness for it to really do what I need it to do. Yeah, also like I think they get on the board like pretty quickly too. I'm considering like maybe just taking out Liliana because I'm putting in like three pieces of removal. Even though she put in a lot of work just now, I feel like they'll get on the board a lot quicker, especially when they're I mean they're gonna be on the play. I 
I think I'm going to do it like that. Let's see. So a little bit extra removal, but like good exile stuff. Um, the lanterns. I'm so thinking about it. <laughs> I'm so thinking about it. Um, I'm probably at least going to bring in one though. And I might just like take out a Gix here, perhaps in the draw. Thing is like, Gix is fantastic, um, but it's also a legendary creature. <laughs> I don't want to like stuck in my hand, despite there being so much discard to draw on this, which is why like they have decided to put four Gixes in here because, you know, with all the blood tokens, discard, you are never really stuck with multiple legendaries in your hand. I think I'm uh, I'm okay with like putting it here. I could have also done a land out on the draw. That's the strategy people do sometimes, especially in a deck like this with 25 lands, I'm pretty sure. Feels like I should have done that now that I have five lands in my hand, but this is fine. It's fine. Or, you know, over on my stream and channel, we like to do a, a, what we call the 61 special. When you don't really know what the last card is to take out, so you just make it a 61. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I think this is not a, not a bad place to start, especially for the first time of playing with the deck. And playing against a non-meta deck as well is really important. It makes it a lot more uh, tricky to sideboard correctly, so... Okay, I'll just take the hit from the Cacophony Scamp here. And then let's see what they play. Surely they have a 3-drop, right? Feeling pretty comfortable here with these preachers in my hand, too. The value will soon be mine. Especially, like, for toughness. Like, this looks so nicely, too. It's crazy. Okay. Yep. Yep, I'm in danger. <laughs> yup. Yup, I'm in trouble. It's Obnixilus. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yup, yup. That makes things a lot more complicated. Okay. Especially because we didn't really have like a one drop creature, two drop creature. It's going to be really tricky to get rid of OBS. I mean, I got to decline for a bit, I guess. At least the preachers could get me some life back in the future at some point in time. Maybe. This might just, like, be a loss already, really. If anybody knows the power of Omnixilus, it, it would be me. <laughs> thing is so good. Ob is too good. Uh, so, okay, sacrifice another Phyrexian. Only, right? Not just any creature. Okay, so I could hit this with a cut down. There I go. Incubating is okay. I do have to shoot the Sheriff. I was like thinking that shoot the Sheriff might have been relevant for me, but I wasn't expecting in a way that it would hit like an <laughs> Incubate um, token. Arexian token. Okay, so we, our Preacher didn't trigger because we went after Planeswalker. It's like really weird. I was talking about this not too long ago with some people um, on the stream. So Preacher is written in a way that if you attack a player um while well, you they have the most life you get a, a, a vampire so planeswalker doesn't count but if you attack a planeswalker while you have the highest life total you still draw a card it's weird but that's how it works. it's weird but that's how it works so i'm gonna have to decline this Ooh, i'm playing some dangerous games here i think I'm playing some dangerous games. Creature just removed. Yeah. Like, I... It's just so difficult. I'm gonna have to, like, start discarding soon. I mean, there's just kind of no other way around it, you know? Am I, am I just shooting the devil? <sighs> Probably.
I'm getting uh, I'm getting bullied by my favorite planeswalker. <laughs> it's rough out here. It's rough out here. All right. Well, this is the only other thing I can do. We play the preacher. If the opponent removes things, it's going to be looking really tough for us. But we'll see. The preachers are great at attacking everything but planeswalkers when you're behind on life. Anyway, I will. Uh... You know, honestly, I'm probably discarding Gix because I'm not drawing cards anytime soon, so I can't really afford to lose life. Ooh, you're a Rask Forge. That is potentially dangerous. I do have the Abraid, but not that that's gonna like do a whole lot for me. The danger zone. Oh, Nixless is gonna get me. I don't know. Like, I can afford one attack. <laughs> so, the thing is, at least the Forsaken Miner makes a good discard target of Nixless. We got that going for us. The Forsaken Miner, once again, good job. Bestia is getting it done. All right, bat. Ooh. Ooh. ooh, ooh. Well, I guess I have to grab the Arc Fiend, because then at least I saw it. If I grab the cut down, then just play the Arc Fiend. <laughs> it's over for me, man. It's over for me. All right, I'm just going to pass. Yup, that will be a discard for me. Thank you. Could be that they drew it to a land and they can cut down, play land. Oh, okay, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Nah, I'm so done. I'm so done. I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. The Obnixless absolutely, uh, absolutely got me. Huh. I mean, it's something to keep on in mind when we're deciding to, you know, what, what hand we can keep. I, I think I'll run it back, honestly. Even though the, the rest looks a little bit more tempting now because they also have Eurobrask Forge, but... I still have the bats. Looks good. <laughs> At least I'm not getting hit by an ob. Looks good, looks good, I'll take it. Okay. Yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. But as somebody that loves to shove like at least three copies of ob Nixless in my sideboard whenever I'm playing any Rectal Sack, I get it. <laughs> like, I get it. It's very fair. Uh, so we have the turn one bat play, we have the turn or turn two bat play, and we have the turn two harvester play. There's a good chance there's like a cut down. Mm, I kind of want to start with the bat though. Because if there's not a cut down, this is just really good. And that's a cut down. <laughs> All right, bat, it was fun for, uh, you know, the one second it lasted, I guess. Okay, a risky two land keep, but. Double Grafted Butcher and another go for the throat still. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah we got to be a, bit, a little bit smart about this because the Preacher of the Schism is a lot of value. So I don't want to just have that be hit by the go for throw. I'm just going to put Harvester in play here. This is what I meant, like, in a deck deck with, like, the, you know, the bat gives you insight on, like, how to, like, sequence your hands. Like, I don't want to, like, just play my preacher out into a go for the throw if I can maybe, like, bait it out with something else. Because of how, like, valuable the card is. One of the, uh, the best cards in the game, in my opinion, right now, the Deep Cavern Bat. Like, it's so incredibly good. All right, it's just a cut down on the top, unfortunately. I wish it would have eaten up the go for the throw, but it's okay. We're just going to have to get through the removal one way or another, really. So this is going to be Harvester and Inti. I think out of these two cards, I hope out of these two cards, Inti eats the removal. Um, and then we can replay the other Inti in hand. I think that will be the case. But it's looking uh, not too bad here, unless opponent does land Obnix list. But then I'm still okay because I have two creatures on the board right now. <laughs> Traumatized a little bit, won't lie to you. Okay. 
second grafted butcher. That's fair. Just thinking about attacking. Mm, nah, I'm just gonna let go through, I think. Okay, so I could technically do remove the grafted butcher here with the harvester. I could swing. Um, I mean, I could have also like double blocked this, but I was kind of planning on swinging, to be honest. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, I think. It's tricky, though. It gets really tricky because there's still the go for the throw around, too. Um, Inti. I'm just going to swing. Deck is called Reckless Aggro for a reason. Am I right, guys? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of the land, actually, here. With a counter on Inti. Okay. 25 lands. I think there's always a pretty high chance you find a land one way or another, so. Okay. So, I'm going to stay greedy and, uh... I mean, I could actually play Inti out and Preacher. To be honest, that's probably the right move here. Okay. Preacher is definitely, definitely... Eating to go for throat. Like, <laughs> probably immediately. Yeah, there it goes. But that's okay, like, we're gonna stick to the aggro strategy. The opponent is super much, like, super, super falling behind on lands. Um, I'm gonna be... swinging in here with Inti and Harvester. Discard my land. I want one counter on Inti, so it doesn't have to, like, trade away. We got another land here. Uh, I... Don't like that. Uh oh This is why I'm not a huge fan of 25 land decks. Like, I understand that hitting your land drop in standard is important, but... I will flood out every time, all the time. I mean, I guess I also have blood tokens to discard. But I'll have to start doing that soon. Hopefully the, the NT can live. I mean, I had a chance, a choice there to just get rid of the swamp in my hand. Oh my god, okay. I get out of here. Alright. Just a great reminder um, why I uh, stick to 22 land decks exclusively. <laughs> okay, well, the Soulgate Lantern at least got rid of a Grafted Butcher, so that's something. But um, yeah, not having a creature in play right now is pretty devastating. Ooh, especially if the opponent slams a Eurobrask Forge here. That's not good. It's unfortunate that they actually managed to find another go for the throw, because I was hoping we'd stabilize there. This also gets me to, like, draws me a card if I need to, but... Okay, if anybody could say this, <laughs> this shoulder could. That is probably the best card on the top that we could have in this situation. We did just survive to go for the throats. Like, maybe, just maybe they won't have... Ooh, Arcfiend, okay. Hmm. All right. A miracle? <laughs> I guess like the, you know, what was it? Like the three lands on the top eventually worked out into a good RNG. So there you go, everybody. Gotta survive the bad luck to get the good cards. All right, so the opponent goes to two. Corrupt Conviction would, you know, make him lose the game. We're not out of this just yet, though. There's things that they could do, I think. Okay, no, no, no. They decide to just get out of it. <laughs> All right, fine. Shout out the shoulder. That was absolutely the best card that we could have found on the top. That was, uh, like, dodging a bullet. We'll take it, though. We'll take it. All right, let's do this. Mono black. 
I like it. <laughs> I like it. I will keep. I have a good curve anyways with like the Forsaken Miner and the Liliana and potentially shoulder it. So I could also very easily find red of the top, which is uh, all I need to like unlock the hand completely. So but for a long time, I think this deck can function pretty well as like a mono black deck. So there's only like a few red cards here and there. Rectals again. Well, well, well. I see people have tastes on the MTG Arena ladder tonight. As you all know, well, some of you might not know, but most of you probably know that Rectals is my uh, my number one favorite um, color combination in Magic. I can I can do a little bit of a flex here, and when I say favorite, like I mean it. This is my my Rectals to two. <laughs> I am uh, I'm getting treated here by uh, by the Rectals. Uh, Whatever is out there. Okay, so double black leaf cliffs. This has to be removal. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I could play Liliana. That would probably be like the best way to go around it. I could start discarding some harvesters, maybe. I can play them anyways. Like, I might as well. All right, there you go. Each player discards a card and that will be harvested for me. Let's see what the opponent's playing. I normally like never play at this time. It's like 11 a.m. here. Usually I play at like 11 p.m. So maybe this is like the Rakdos hours. <laughs> the real Rakdos hours have hit. All right, so that is at least shoulder that we can possibly play here. But we know that the opponent is still sitting on some removal. Um. I feel like I gotta try Gix though. Like it's between like Shelly and Gix, and I think I'd rather have Shelly on the board for a long time. Let's see what happens. So that's definitely going to be go for the throw on Gix, 100%. Yeah. All right. Well, um, plus I'll get rid of the Harvester. Like I said, I cannot cast it anyway, so. I'm playing mono black right now. Like they don't have to know <laughs> unless they don't have to know. Cavern of Souls. Surely not another Phyrexian deck, right? <laughs> I would be like in shock, I think. Vampires? Landfall. <laughs> Okay, I need to... I think I want to draw some cards, actually. Let me see what I can set up here. Take action. Do I need it? <laughs> Do I need the red mana? Do I need the red mana? Uh, I'm probably okay with just plussing this and like keeping the pressure on the uh, on the opponent, I think. Like, sometimes you just, like, forget how incredibly valuable Liliana is. Like, what a card. Okay, Gix? Hmm. Mirror match? Question mark? Mirror match? Probably. I love this, uh, Indie Arena pet so much. It, it definitely is a mirror. Ooh, I got the cut down just now. Ooh. But if I minus Liliana, then Shouldred can get played. And I really do like the idea of that. So I'm going to minus this. Let's get rid of it to clear it away because I would like to draw two cards. Ideally. And if not, I'm just going to play Shouldered out. Okay. Shouldered it is. So that is two go for the throws out of their deck already. That's pretty good. It literally uh, increases shoulder survival rate by a lot and she gets the job done. So people, shoulder lands, people know what time it is, kind of is uh, how it is sometimes. All right, yeah, I think we're, uh, I think we're in a mirror. Even though the cavern is, cavern on what, Phyrexian? Maybe? Vampire? I don't know, but we're in a mirror, so. Uh, what are we gonna do in the mirror or something similar to it you know um 
the sideboard is very much like mm, made for the top tier decks in a format which makes a lot of sense on the pro tour but it doesn't really give us a good strategy when it comes to sideboarding against you know other rectal's mid-range slash aggro decks so like hitatsugu doesn't do anything for us soul guide lantern doesn't really do much obliterating bolt could be a consideration so could blood out be like the opponent might be on eclazots blood, blood out could always like hit something valuable um so i'm thinking like maybe we play blood out maybe i mean i guess obliterating bolt could kind of get the job done as well um if it comes to like Aklazots, Extract Truth or Duress is not really where I want to be at in like mid range mirrors. Geek's Command could be valuable, um, especially like buying back stuff in the, the mirror could be really nice. Hmm. I like the Liliana still too a lot though. I'm wondering if this is maybe taking out like some Forsaken Miners. So like maybe I'll do like one Miner out. Definitely probably go lower on the land on the draw here. <laughs> um don't want to really get uh hit by that so then we gotta call one more card here gix is super valuable but then again I'm thinking i'll just got like a fourth gix again here i think all right this is gonna this is gonna work for me like i said probably not perfect sideboarding but gets the job done <laughs> it gets the job done so that's what we care about here doesn't have to be flawless, it just has to be good enough to win us the game. Seems alright, seems alright. It actually is... a mirror? Or is this maybe like... skeletons? I'm not really sure what they're uh doing with the cavern um i'm gonna put the uh harvester in play probably that probably it's removal you know okay immediately <laughs> immediately that makes sense there is their gix Okay, so here we have a little bit of a problem. We missed our land drop, and um, we don't have removal for Gix, and that could get out of hand really, really quickly. I mean, I have the blood token here to look for a land, maybe, but... Ooh, this is uh, not ideal. Can't believe I'm out here just like recording a couple games for this video and it's like back to back rectals. <laughs> the rectals mirror. The grind fest, you know? Okay. Gix, draw a card, I guess. While I go to 12. We're gonna fall up behind really quickly here, I'm afraid. All right, <laughs> you already know what time it is. <laughs> this is crazy. I haven't played against Rectals in so long. Like I'm usually just the Rectals player, you know? That's insane. <laughs> That's insane. Um, yeah, I want to get that Forsaken Winder back in the deck. Um, I'm probably taking out the Gix command. Um, I could put the land back in, but you know, maybe I should. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should. Maybe I'll get rid of like Liliana perhaps because they do also play the Forsaken Miners. So that definitely makes Liliana a little bit worse. Um, and then, uh, probably keep it like this, I guess. All right, so they play OBS. So it's going to be important for us to get on the board um, and uh, apply some pressure. Stay true to our name, Rectus Agro. Please. I'm gonna try it. Like <laughs> the Mirax will tap for red so we can play the harvester. And if we can then find a land <clears throat> swamp, I hope. I mean this deck doesn't really play any like basic mountains. You do have double soak and so on. 
Uh, this is also like the one Mirax in the deck, surprisingly. So I'm taking my chances with this one. I do have removal as well, which is pretty clutch. So uh, we're going to try it, even though there is so much removal on the opponent's side as well, I'm sure. We're, uh, we're trying it. Like, especially like in the mirror too, like you don't really want to mulligan <laughs> either. Like card advantage is, uh, is key, you know. Card advantage is key. I don't know. The opponent's probably got like a really tricky, uh, tricky hand here. Please do go ahead and mulligan the four. Okay, they did it. <laughs> Shame. Okay. Here we go. At least the harvester with the blood token can help us like unlock the hand too if we really, uh, really need it. Forsaken Miner on one for the opponent. Alrighty. I'm gonna play my Harvester. I could have played like Soul Guide Lanterns against Miners, but I don't really think that's necessarily worth it. Soul Vampire. There goes Harvester. Okay. That swings. We'll not be blocking that. And I hit my land drop. I am very, very happy about that. I'm gonna swing in here with the Harvester and probably play out the Preacher, I think, so... Okay. Preacher. Now we're on... This is going to be, like, really, uh... Really interesting, because I feel like I'm in a good spot here, but... Opponent's got six cards in hand. They could technically, like, play another Harvester and, like, remove my Preacher that way, and that would be... I should stop saying that. <laughs> I should sometimes just learn how to be quiet. That would help me out a lot. Okay. Um, hmm. So if I play Gix here, they would just remove the Gix with the, the Harvester, which is not great. Not, not great. No, not great. So I got two options, kind of. Mm, it's probably... It's probably going to be a li obliterating bolt on the Harvester because the opponent um, could have shoulder curve, maybe, you know? I'm just going to, like, get rid of this. I want to keep my Harvester around. So if the opponent removes my Harvester upon attacking, which they could do with a cut down, it is what it is. All right, there I go. And I'm going to hold shoot the Sheriff. Need to also like make the way a little bit better for uh for Liliana here. Okay. So let's see what their plan is now. Duress. Ooh, okay. Well that's probably gonna be I mean, I don't know actually, depending on like what their hand looks like, it could be Sheriff or Liliana. Okay, Liliana. Inti. I was about to say, Inti, you better you better not be a <laughs> now a law Inti. Fortunately, Inti is not, so I could remove this here, and uh, that's probably what I'm doing because I'm gonna start drawing some cards with Gix. So, I'm not only even gonna give them the opportunity to discard and draw, I'm just gonna get rid of things. Here we go. I'm gonna put Gix in play. Start getting some cards for myself. Opponent goes to eight. Take action. Do I want to play that out? Yes, I do. The rest of fence is still nice. The card advantage is, uh, or like card advantage, the land advantage is really helping us out. The opponent is missing some land drops here. Immediately plays land, that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. And they play an Inti. Now, I wonder if they're going to activate Inti's ability. Well, they'll have to now. Get rid of Gix? Okay. Inti is truly like a very, very difficult card to play. And this is kind of like a situation where you see this. Like, the opponent didn't have to play that Takanuma out this turn, especially if they were planning on playing Inti, because you could hit a land with that. And now they kind of, like, in a way, messed up, because they got rid of a card out of their hand to draw a card that they can't play. Especially in a deck like this, with, like, a lot of three drops and two drops, like, that was a risky, uh, a risky move. They just kind of gave themselves card disadvantage, in a way. Um, so, I... I do, I do believe that Inti is capable of some uh, powerful stuff, though. 
I mean, I actually, to be fair, I could just swing with both here. Because the opponent kind of like... Mm, if they don't block this, they take... They go to like two. I mean, that's... Not really uh, where they should be at. I'm just going to swing here, I guess. But I think there could definitely still be some removal. Um, but I feel like they would have used that maybe earlier. I don't know. Maybe now. Yep, go for the throw. It is. Okay. So I'll play the Preacher out. I'll probably hold the Blackleaf Cliffs. I might discard it to the Blood Token here. Um, yeah, maybe. I could also use Harvester, get rid of Inti. So that is one go for throw out. Feeling a little like rough here now for disrespecting Inti. Ooh, Hobnixilis. Okay. I don't mess with that too much. I mean, that's gotta be Obnixilis, like, Sacrifice Forsaken Miner, 100%. It's always Obnixilis. I don't get why this deck doesn't have some obs in the sideboard. Like, the card is so good. So this is pretty rough because they can just get some, uh... Some life back this way, too. I'm at six now. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Another land. Alright, I think I'm definitely going to get rid of Inti here. That decision kind of backfired on me. Those vents. Be drawn a card. I'm not too happy with that. I wish there was a way that I had like a pain land so I could ping myself for one and create a blocker. <laughs> um. Okay, so I think one restless vents goes on Obnixilis. I think I need to go after both obs, really. The, the pressure is just too much. Yeah, I need to do that, I think. Okay, so I'll discard this. I mean, I don't think there's a way that I can play out my cards, so... It's kind of the problem. Because... <laughs> I need to turn the discard to Opnix. We'll see what they do, though. It could very easily be like a double block of the, on the Preacher of the Schism, and that they could take it out, right? Okay, so it's going to be this instead. Oh, if they had mana open, oh, they could have brought back. That would have been devastating. I actually did not realize that these devils commit crimes. It's crazy. Um, oh, this is so rough. This is so rough. Okay, so I could do Swamp, Inti, and discard Shouldered, right? And then once the opponent forces me to discard, I do get a card back with Inti. Like, Inti could kind of like counter Ob in a way. But shoulder is so good. <laughs> shoulder is so good. That she could give me the life that I need. I think I need to believe in shoulder. Yeah, I think I need to believe in shoulder. She could save. All right, so that's going to be discarding the land. Mm. 
Okay, opponent swings, so it'll have something. Okay. Going to attackers here. It's going to be Preacher on Ob. Like, I have to get rid of that. Like, <laughs> Ob Nix Lewis is being such a menace. Is this removal? Shoot the sheriff. Ooh. That's a good draw from the opponent, though. All right, Shouldred. Save me! <laughs> Save me. Save me, Shouldred. Again. Okay, opponent's going to uh, try to look for more removal, I guess. You, you two. Okay, not an, not an outlaw. <laughs> this is crazy. I also still have like the blood token for like life gain if I really need to desperately gain two points of life, which could very much be the case. Like if they hit removal off the top and I still feel like the urge to be in this game, I could discard this blood token, draw a card. It's so like. <laughs> Yeah, if there's one thing I could change about this deck is I would definitely shove some mobs in the sideboard. <laughs> what a nightmare. Yup, I will discard. Don't you worry. Okay, what is your last card? Because Inti does give Trample and that could be a... Getting the job done. Oh man, this is so rough. I feel like if they had removal, they would have used it though. It's kind of a thing. Like if they had removal, it would have been used for sure. All right, I'm going in. Shoulder to trample and death touch. Oh. Oh, 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 ayo, 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 is that a cut down? That could be GG's. I'm not like letting it go through because I can just remove the devil whenever like it's already got trample. I feel like if they had removal, they should have used it already. That's, that's my two cents. Like I gotta try, right? I gotta try. So there I go. Trample, do your job, do your thing. You got this. Oh my god. <laughs> what a game, though. Anyway, we did it, guys. That was an incredible, incredible match. Wow.